Tuesday the 21st of March is Cluster Headache Awareness Day, affecting thousands of people across the UK. One of those sufferers is Kev Crook, who's with me now to talk a bit about the condition and also uh, about the Awareness Day itself. Kev, uh, how did you first realise that you were having cluster headaches and, and how is it diagnosed? Uh, I started suffering in January 2015. Uh, I've since been diagnosed with uh, the condition which is chronic. So I suffer with chronic cluster headaches, which I get at anything between four and eight attacks every single day. Uh, it, I've been, seen, been to see several neuros to uh, diagnose the condition and confirm what I've got. Uh, I've got no, it's got no cure to it. It's just a case of they, they give you medication to try and control it, try and ease the pain, try and ease the suffering the people who suffer with it. Uh, I'm trying to struggle, trying to not get an attack at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done short videos which I've put on Facebook and people have seen, well, Tina, my wife, who's a supporter, has put a video of me suffering on Facebook, which people have seen it and they've been absolutely horrified with what I'm actually going through. Uh, they realised I was suffering, but they didn't realise I was suffering to the extent that I actually do. Uh, Trying to trying to aware, raise awareness on the 21st of March through a group called OuchUK.org. Uh, they offer brilliant support for, for, for myself and many other sufferers. Uh, it's a very rare condition. The two conditions I suffer from, you're more likely to be struck by lightning three times as you walk from your doorstep to your car. Than to, than to get both of these? Yeah. And, yeah. and I've known you for well over a decade, and I know you're somebody who doesn't let little things get you down and wouldn't allow something to affect you as much as I know this does affect you if it wasn't truly painful, truly debilitating at times, and something which has, has come about that is, is literally become life-changing for you. And I know you need the level of support that both your wife, Tina, and you know, the, these charitable organisations are, are able to offer. But was it a, a, in some way a kind of relief when you had it diagnosed because you finally understood what was going on? Well, when I first suffered with it, the, from the, on the first day I completely blacked out and uh, I was rushed into, uh, into Coventry University Hospital. Uh, blacked out. Once I come back around, I was in the most worst pain. I, could, I couldn't even describe the pain. It's like somebody trying to stick a, a hot poker through your eye. Uh, electric shocks across my jaw, around my ear. Uh, it's like somebody trying to hit you with a baseball bat around your head constantly. It doesn't doesn't stop. It doesn't go away. You can't sit still. You're agitated all the time. It's not a case that you can go and lie down and take a couple of paracetamol and hope it will go away. It's it, women describe it the worse a pain than actually giving childbirth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's known as if you Google it, it's known as the worst medical worst pain known to medical science. Uh, People hear the word headache, and I've, I've seen, I've gone myself, I've gone to GPs, and you say the word headache. I've phoned up for appointments, and I say, Why are you bothering the, doc the doctor with a headache? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, it's, it's really understates what it actually is. What, what we're actually suffering from. And it's it's so much more than that, as I say, uh, you're someone I know who, do, who would, would suffer pain, but yeah. it's probably worse in some ways because there, there isn't really anything physically there that's causing this. It is, is it a fault in the pain receptors? Is that how they would probably bill it as? Or yes. how, how do they try and describe to you what's really going on in your, in your own head? Well, I've been told that uh, many MRIs, I've got uh, blood vessels that are twisted and actually touching the nerve. Mm -hmm. uh, they found that's definitely contributing to it. It's uh, something what's basically uh, receptors in your head uh, keep firing all the time. Mm -hmm. It's 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 like they don't shut off. So you basically, you've got too busy a brain as things stand, and that really isn't helping the condition. And that does mean, I suppose, that if you are trying to concentrate on something, we all know that if you've got a minor headache, I suffer from migraines, that if you are trying to, to focus on something, it can make it worse. Sometimes you can see through it, other times it, 
is different and you know hopefully best how to control that but when there is very little control and the, I suppose the, the drug regime for this to avoid getting used to any particular one drug you're cycling through different types of medication and again that in itself managing that could probably bring on an attack. Because it's such a rare condition there's, there's hardly any research into the conditions and uh, this is why we're trying to spread awareness a little bit more. Uh, they've also got a, a day out in London which one of the top consultants, Dr. Lambrew, who I see in uh, St. Thomas's in London, has financed some of that himself. Mm -hmm. But it's being act actually held in Parliament next on the on the twenty first today uh, to try and raise MPs' awareness of the condition, trying to get some more funding. Uh, the thousands suffer from it, but we we almost suffer in silence because people aren't aware of it unless they actually witness it or actually suffer from it or know somebody who suffers from it. Most people, you say the word cluster headaches, they, they don't hear the cluster, they hear the headache mm -hmm. and go away. It's an invisible illness which, unless you actually witness it, you can't see it, you're, you're totally normal. As you say, the drugs, very trial and error. It's a case of this works for one condition, it might work for you, try this. It's worked for one patient. Unfortunately, what works for one patient to control from it gives another person terrible side effects. And well, yeah, I mean, it's stuff like, I know that paracetamol will actually give me a headache. I've taken it when I don't have a headache, but working alongside something like ibuprofen, that does work for me. I say, I only get migraines. I, I'm, I'm lucky there. I know with what you're going through, it's significantly worse than that. And it is, again, the whole chemical balance of your body it could be anything as ridiculous as you, you might find out. It's, there's, a, there's a drink or something which could yes. make it worse or make it better. You don't really know, do you? I've, I've had to totally avoid any alcohol for the last two, just over two years. I've tried drinking. I, I love a pint. I love a pint of real ale. But I've only got to smell the stuff now and it brings on an attack. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody wearing strong perfume, deodorants, af aftershaves, air fresheners in cars, paint. Anything like that can trigger trigger off an attack. Uh, the cold, if it's too cold, if it's too hot. Worst of all is if I, I find myself, if I'm busy, I try to tent, fight my way through attacks. Like I've struggled on through work and I've, I've tried to fight through attacks and just go carry on. As soon as I switch off and relax, bang. I find it's, it's almost as if he's waiting for you to, to, to yeah, put your guard down. It, uh, yeah, it, it, it comes every single day. Uh, I'm woken up two or three times a night. It's like you could set an, it's like an alarm clock off it, it going off in your head. Uh, you could be fast, just as you're starting to drift off to sleep after about an hour and a half, bang. It's like somebody's viciously assaulting you. And you've, you've got no control over when it's gonna come. You've got a rough idea when it's gonna come because you get set patterns, but then you get attacks where they come as and when they want which is, I can only say it's it's changed my life in the last two years. Uh, I've had a total of, I'm off work now. I've been off for the last five weeks. When I was first diagnosed, I was off for six weeks. I know people who have lost their houses, their jobs, their livelihoods, everything through this condition. And it changes people in, in, in a second. Mm -hmm. It's just, I can't, I can't describe how it's changed me. It's, I'm fortunate that I've got Tina who supports me 100%. Uh, I find myself snapping when I'm in such such pain, which I hate myself for, but there's not a lot I can do about that. Other than say sorry after, but uh, that's, that's the way I am. Through the support of your family and these organisations, hopefully with the Awareness Day, we'll start to see some sort of research done that can hopefully help with that. OuchUK.org is the web address. Please go along, find out more, and think of those who are suffering from this condition on March the 21st. But Kev, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Jason. Uh, it's great having support from friends and family as well, friends who know me and are aware of the condition. They have been really supportive. Well, good luck on making your way through this and, uh, you know, know everyone's there for you. Thank you for help having me in today and, and getting this awareness out for us. We, on behalf of everybody who suffers, we really, really appreciate it.